YouTube team keep it clean what's going on it's Graven here with another video and another episode of NFL questions from subs a series where you can ask me any NFL question you want to and we answer it in a video just like this if you want to be part of it you can send me an email to team keep it clean at gmail.com or for the patrons you can send it directly on patreon if you want to become a team keep it clean patron you can go to patreon.com slash engraven vids like I always say if you want to if you don't want to Either way, it's fine. I'm going to still love y'all regardless. Team, keep it clean. Today is the Ravens' second preseason game, or at least when you should be seeing this video. It should be before the second preseason game. But so don't, but don't hold me to it. But anyway, we got some fire questions, as we always do. We ain't wasting no more time. Let's do it. First question came from my boy Dylan J. He said, hey, Graven, Dylan here. Second question for you. Jimmy Smith has previously said he doesn't want to play for another team than the Ravens, uh, which is cool and all, but with the young corner stockpile we seem to have, do you think it's more likely he signs with another team or retires outright after we inevitably cut him? Don't want to assume things, but with the way things are going, we may find out sooner rather than later. No, I don't think we're going to find out sooner at all. I think he will definitely be with the team this year. Um, next year, though, I, I don't think so. I even before they re-signed him, um, I didn't even think he was going to be with the team this year. I, I really didn't. I thought last season was going to be his last last year with the team. But um, I think this is it for Jimmy Smith because when you start talking retirement, they said it on the I Am Athlete podcast. Oh man, I just realized I haven't seen that. It hasn't come on in a long time. I guess they're taking a break. But they said it on there. When you start talking about retirement, you start thinking about it, then it's already time. So I, I think this will be Jimmy Smith's last year. Uh, regardless, with the Ravens and probably in the NFL. Next question came from a guy, Eugene. He said, what's good, Engraven? Hope all is well. Question, how do you feel about Josh Oliver? Do you think keeping him uh, that we can get back to our three tight end packages? Uh, seems like we took a turn once we lost Hayden Hurst. And also, what position do we take a hit on with cutting one to keep the third tight end? He said, P.S., we need the whole intro song released, bro. That thing is fire. Appreciate it. We done done that already. We done put the whole thing out already. Uh, but anyway... Um, I don't even really think another position has to suffer in order to keep a third tight end. I, I don't. Um, so with Josh Oliver right now, it's looking like he's going to be that guy. Uh, that's what all signs are pointing to, uh, especially with them waving Wolf last week. Um, they still got Eric Thomason, so he could battle for it, but... Nah, it's not going to be Thomas. They're going to want somebody more athletic and whatnot, somebody who's more of a field stretcher, more similar to Mark Andrews than somebody similar to Nick Boyle. Um, so I, I think he'll definitely hold it down, and I don't think they'll have to necessarily sacrifice a roster spot in order to keep him. Next question. And the timing of this was everything, and he ended up making himself right. But it came from my guy Antoine. He said, what's good? Hope all is well. Uh, this was on August 6th. He said, I have one concern for the upcoming season, and that's Rashad Bateman. Should we be worried that he can't put together two consecutive practices nor finish the one he started? And all this is happening before the hitting and the pads come on. So he saw the pattern, and we talked about this pattern as well, something that was a concern for us. But hopefully, now that he's, he's had his surgery, now that he's gotten that out of the way, uh, hopefully that was what was bothering him, and that was really what was holding him back. So now hopefully he could be a full go and be full healthy moving forward. Next question came from my guy Raven Pride. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope you and your family are doing well, because with what you do, keeping us updated is a plus. I, I appreciate it, man. Engraven, you said we could dwell on anything as a question or a concern. Uh, I like to inform Team Keep It Clean that I have full-blown oh, COVID-19 and pneumonia. I got diagnosed on uh, August 19th, 2021. Uh, when we think we did enough and we let our guards down, that's when we lose. Uh, but brother, I'm in, in Idaho in the hospital and believe that I'll be here for 10 or 14 days. Uh, so with that, I just want to say thank you for reading my email because engraving you the best at what you do, keeping guys updated on Raven Nation, your boy Raven's Pride. Oh, man, I, um, man, we all, we all rocking with you, though, man. Uh, we appreciate you being willing to share that with us, man, and being willing to share that with all the team. Keep it clean, man. Keep going, man. We already know you're going to keep going. Uh, you just got to rest up for a little bit, and then things will be better uh, in no time. But um, we, we appreciate you checking in uh, with us, and uh, that's what it's about, checking in. Um, and then, like I said, so sooner rather than later, everything going to turn around. You're going to be back on your feet, back driving the trucks, back with your dog. Uh, and everything going to be good to go. But we love you. We we appreciate you. And thank you for letting us know about that, man. Next question came from Jaquan C. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope everything is good with you and the fam. Couple things. What game do you think this year will be the most important game in the regular season at the time that we play that game? And also, do you think the Ravens will shock us with a cut and who? Uh, right now, I don't really see any surprising cut. Well, one surprising cut I could see could possibly be Anthony Levine. 
that that would be really the only one and maybe a LJ Fort. Um, but those two, they, they got a lot of ties to the Ravens, especially emotionally, especially Anthony Levine, because he'd been around for a long time with the Ravens. So um, I just I could see them cutting him, but I don't see them cutting him uh, with LJ Fort. We'll see how this preseason game goes and see how often he plays and when he plays. I think that could be indicative of his possible future with the Ravens. Um, and other than that, as far as which game, because that's a that's a tricky question right now. Uh, which game do you think this year will be the most important game in the regular season at the time when we play that game? I would say the playoff game. <laughs> Next question came from my boy Mike Greed. He said, Engraving, hope all is well. Mike Greed here. Ken Airy, LOL. Short and simple question this go round. Anyway, in your voice. <laughs> There's so many players going into the first year of their contract. Oh, the final year of their contract. I can't even read. Uh, and hearing a lot of them say that they aren't worried about it. They're worried about winning the Super Bowl. If we do win it all, which I hope that we do. Hey, me too. Do you see some players pricing themselves out of Baltimore? Of course. Of course. For sure. Like, they of course say that. And that's the right thing to say. Like, I ain't worried about the money. I just want to win the Super Bowl. And they do want to win the Super Bowl. Because... Again, like I always say, I feel like a Super Bowl, like a Hall of Fame is nice because the Hall of Fame means that you were one of the best, the best players during your career for a long time. But the Super Bowl, only one team wins that every single year. Um, so they're saying the right things, but the better they play and when you win a Super Bowl on top of that, you look that much more better, that much more attractive to other teams uh, in free agency. And, you know, Ravens, Ravens, ain't, they ain't getting into no bidding war with nobody. They ain't, ain't getting into that with nobody for no player. Um, so, yeah. Because uh, when they get into bidding wars, <laughs> a lot of times they lose. Like, well, we saw how this past offseason went. Um, but, yeah, I, I think for sure a lot of them would end up pricing themselves out of Baltimore because teams would want a player that would have that Super Bowl experience and that recent Super Bowl experience because uh, that could help their team out moving forward to have uh, somebody on a team that a lot of players could look up to and be like, oh, how did you guys do it? You say, hope all is well, and may God continue to bless you and your family, and hashtag team keep it clean. Appreciate it, Mike. Next question came from my boy Howard S. He said, what's happening in Graven? I saw the Ravens Saints preseason game last night. My observations was, of course, a typical preseason game with backups and a couple of starters playing. The defense will be good as usual, but my main concern, and he put it in all caps, when we get to the regular season is our offensive line. Even when the projected starting five line up, I'm still skeptical because I'm not starting, uh, I'm starting not to be so sure about the Bozeman move back to center. And I'm definitely not sold on the addition of our new right tackle, Alejandro. I'm not even trying to spell or pronounce his name. He just put hashtag AV. Uh, I don't think that transition from left to right is going so smoothly like people thought it would. That Orlando Brown Jr. trade might come back to haunt us. What's your thoughts? I ain't ever really want them to even trade him. Um, I, I would have rather them kept him and just let him go uh, in the next offseason. But, hey, it's all good. Uh, it is what it is. Um... I wouldn't freak out now. It was one preseason game, and not all the starters even played. You ain't seen no Ronnie Stanley out there. You ain't seen no Kevin Zeitler out there. So I, I, I wouldn't freak out about it. I know there's a lot of concern for the offensive line right now because of what we saw. But, again, it was just one game, and it was one preseason game, and it was not even with the starting lineup. So no reason to go crazy right now. Next question came from BB. He said, do you think it would be a good idea for the Ravens to wait until the end of the season to give Lamar Jackson his contract? This preseason training camp has not been kind to the wide receivers as Hollywood, Boykin, and Bateman seem to have injuries already. This cannot be the narrative in win now mode if the Ravens did wait until the league rebounds after this season and a stronger salary cap is implemented I think both Lamar and the Ravens will benefit they're gonna need this extra cash in case injuries get worse and they need to sign someone to fill in let me know what you think bro shout out to team keep it clean and hope all is well with you and the fam oh everything is good uh no they they do not have to wait they should not I mean the longer they wait is only going to benefit Lamar Jackson because the longer you wait the more his value will increase Every season, every game, every snap, his value increases. Even when he's not on the field, his value increases because you look at the backups after him. We saw it with Trace, with Tyler. Tyler Dunley did his thing, but he still wasn't Lamar. So Lamar Jackson's value still kept increasing. So the longer you wait, the more you're going to have to pay. If they paid him right now, his money wouldn't kick in until the year after next. So I will, he would have signing bonuses and stuff like that. But his annual salary wouldn't kick in until the year after next because he still has the fifth-year option. So whatever they do now, it would not hinder them from having money to carry over just in case you need to sign somebody because of injury. So longer Ravens wait, hey, 
Every dollar counts. The next question came from my boy, Nicholas W. He said, have you came to the point where it's just genuinely not even worth it to try and argue with someone online about Lamar Jackson? I still, well, I would actually back up before that. And I would say, I've came to the point where it's just genuinely not even worth it to try and argue with someone online. Boom. That's it. That's it. Save yourself the headache. Save yourself the energy. Protect your energy. And that's it. But let's read the rest of the question. He said, I still see some people online that think the Ravens haven't won a playoff game yet with Lamar. And even if you explain to them all the good Lamar has done, the only stat they care about is passing yards. Yeah, like I said, man, it's I, I couldn't do it. I, I literally see people do it every single day. And just when I even just look at it, it's draining. It's like, man, they, they really just arg argue and fight and back and forth. Every single, I can't do it, man. I, that ain't for me. I ain't built like that, man. So, yeah, that's that's a no. Next question came from my guy, Manuel. He said, shout out from Mexico. He said, have you noticed that in every practice the Ravens had, Proche is the first on the field and ready to go? Uh, it reminded me of George Washington before he was the general of the Continental Army. He would show himself in the meetings with the military uniform and be one of the first ones to arrive, yet never demanded the position and only spoke when spoken to. Uh, when he got the job, he responded with humbleness, although we all know that internally he was celebrating. With Proche, he always speaks not only about himself, but also about the team when asked the question. Could it be that Proche took a page of Washington and even though he is catching everything thrown at him, uh, is he winning points with EDC to stay on the roster by being one of the first ones on the field and showcasing his, his skills but not being prideful about it? Stay safe and tell team keep it clean to check on each other because we all we got. And got to see Lamar retire two numbers. Ooh, that would be something. Um, yeah, Proche definitely been doing his thing. He definitely been doing his thing. He definitely been putting in a lot of work. Um, and yeah, that that first thing, that 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 cheesy saying that you always hear, oh man, the first one on the field and the last one going. He's actually doing it. It's actually real. Jeff Zrebeck even reported about it. He said, yes, Proche has literally been the first one on the field and the last one off. So he's living it. Um, so with Proche, right now he's looking like a lock. He is looking like a lock. He's seeming like a lock. Initially, like early, early in training camp, when they kept showcasing Proche and they kept talking about him, thinking, hmm, are they trying to trade Proche? Then the injuries happened. And then, but then we kept hearing about him. We kept hearing more and more and more and more and more about him. I'm like, oh, okay. Okay now. And they started putting him on, on all the videos and stuff. And then they said he was beating Marlon Humphrey. He was beating Marcus Peters. He beat Jimmy Smith. He thought, oh, I said, oh, okay now, Proche. Now, that, that, that's a nice little weapon to have in the chamber. Because Lamar obviously got Sammy in Hollywood and going to have Baby whenever he, come, he comes back. But then DuVernay and Proche can't sleep on them either. And then Miles Boy, Miles Boy can see right now. Before I was thinking, all right, it's, it's going to be Miles Boy. And he's going to get that last spot. Proche going to be the odd man out. They'll try to put him on a practice squad. But he ain't going to last on a practice squad. Somebody going to scoop him. But now it's, it's looking a little bit otherwise. Next question came from Terry. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope you and your family are doing good right now. Wish nothing but the best and blessings. Appreciate that. I wanted to talk about Jeff Saturday's opinion about the Ravens passing attack. If you want to watch the video, oh, he dropped me the link. Uh, and I would want to know if you agree with Jeff Saturday or me. So to sum up the video, thank you for doing that. Uh, Jeff Saturday said that he doesn't see the Ravens passing attack progressing this year and being in the same position as last year because one injuries, two chemistry, and three reps. And in my opinion, I disagree. I remember you, uh, you don't know if those players are working together secretly and if and you don't post anything, people don't think you're working. And I stand by that. Yeah, that is true. That is true. Because, yeah, you don't know what they're going on. All we see is social media. We don't know, whoa, are they, are they actually really working together? We, we just don't know. So, anyway. Uh, early in the year, we saw Mark Andrews, Hollywood Rashad Bateman, and Lamar and J.K. get in some work together in the offseason. And they might have had other players from the team there. Uh, but, oh, Sammy Watkins was there, too. Uh, but then I noticed how he didn't bring up the additions of T. Martin and Keith Williams, which will put significant pressure on Greg Roman to succeed. We saw in the preseason, we started to see more under center plays, which is good. That's true. Uh, and last, when he was saying reps, it's the offseason starters. Uh, they don't really need to play. I would say because teams are looking for depth or starters at some point. Thanks for reading my question slash opinion. Hope you and the family continue to do great things. And team, keep it clean. Big trust. Appreciate it. No, I, I, I definitely would... Uh, I definitely think that the Ravens passing attack is going to take a step forward. Now, I'm not expecting this number one overall passing attack. No, I'm not even expecting them to take some crazy, crazy jump in passing yards. Mm -mm. They don't need to do that. They don't need to do that. So many people get caught up. Oh, yeah, Ravens last in passing yards, but it's not all about the yards. You could be first in passing yards, but you could be last in your division. You could be last in your conference. Passing yards don't tell the whole story. They really don't. It's all about efficiency. 
Ravens can be very efficient. Now, along with their efficiency, they just need to accompany some, some diversity needs to accompany that efficiency. So your, your play call and your scheme as far as the passing game, it just, it just needs to be more diverse now. It, mean, it needs to be more diverse and it needs to put people in positions to succeed. That's it. It's not going to take anything crazy. It's not going to take anything over the top. All you need is just a little bit more diversity. That's what they brought them boys T and Keith in for, to add some diversity to the offense, to really help kick this offense to another level where they know it has the potential to, to, to go to. And once they get to that potential, oof. Next question also came from my boy Manuel. He said, I was looking at the highlights of the Ravens Panthers training camp, uh, and I saw that we're using the same passing schemes on, of last year, but wide receivers were open and catching the passes. But that made me wonder. Sammy Watkins was right, and all wide receivers couldn't get open for them passing plays to work. I understand we wanted to blame Greg Roman for not changing the passing plays last year, but could it be that he couldn't because, number one, our wide receivers couldn't get separation at all or either by lack of their ability uh, or coaching of it? Number two, they dropped the balls when it was time to make a big play. And oh, for us, how many times were we frustrated because of that, uh, because they were game-changing plays? Or number three, Giro couldn't change the scheme because it requires time and we didn't have any time to practice it during the pandemic year. Want to hear your thoughts on that as well? Team, keep it clean. Uh, stay safe and tell Hollywood that we know why he doesn't want to get the tiebreaker against you in Madden because you can beat him that easily, LOL. I got to hit him up about that. Well, I mean, now it's the season time, so no. Nah, I haven't even played Madden yet. But anyway, um, yeah, I, it actually could be a, a, a combination of all three. Of all three. Yeah, um, there were times when wide receivers weren't getting open. Yeah, there were times where wide receivers were dropping the passes. And yeah, there was no time uh, because it, it was an, an irregular time for Greg Roman and his offense to really implement uh, new stuff into the scheme. Now, they still could have made some stuff happen now. And, and they did um, because, I mean, you, you look at teams like the Browns. Look at the Browns. Look at the Browns. Look what they were able to do. Uh, they were able to get a new coach, new GM and all that, and they, they did their thing. It took them a little bit. They had some little nooks and crannies that they had to get past early on in the season. But once they got rolling, they got rolling. So it, it was still possible to do your thing, and especially with the Ravens having consistency at the, coach, in the, at the different coaching positions. That should have gave them, given them even more. Re That's why I thought, I thought going into the season, Ravens had an advantage with that because they did. Returning head coach, returning offensive coordinator, returning defensive coordinator. It's like, okay, even in the pandemic year, you got an advantage over a lot of other teams because you got everybody coming back. Uh, but now that just gives you more excitement for this upcoming season since it has been more of a regular season that they can really put in that work. The last question on this episode of Question from Subs came from my boy, Denal G. Th this question I have been avoiding for a while because y'all know how I feel about lists and all that. But anyway, let's get into it. He said, what's up, Engraven? What's up, team? Keep it clean family. Training camp is finally here. So you can see when he sent, he sent this on July 26. But I've been saving it. For the right time. But anyway, he says, over the past few days, I've been thinking I want to hear your predictions on a few things. You see, the boys have some new toys in town, and they kept some old ones as well. But with the additions, we expect progression. So on both sides of the ball, I have questions for you. I hope you enjoy answering. Number one, Lamar passing and rushing touchdowns along with rushing yards. Uh, passing touchdowns, um, if he plays more uh, and actually is finishing games, uh, I'll say 38 uh, Russian touchdowns, I will say seven. Um, oh, wait a minute. We got 17. Yeah, I'll say 38 and seven. Active game day offensive line players are? I, I can't answer that one. It's, it's, it's way too early. But I'll say Ronnie Stanley, Kevin Zeiler, Bradley Bozeman, Patrick McCarry, Tyree Phillips. Um, who am I missing? Ben Cleveland. Uh, I can't think anymore off the top of my head. Uh, top rusher and top rushing touchdown leader. Um, top rusher, I say J.K. Dobbins. I think they're going to rein it back with Lamar a little bit. Top rushing touchdown leader, uh, either J.K. or Lamar. Um, will Mark Andrews still be number one? Yes. Top receiver in yards, uh, I say Hollywood because of the big plays, which I hope we really get back this year. Um, top receiver in touchdown receptions, I'll go Sammy Watkins. Uh, game day starting wide receivers, Hollywood or Sammy Watkins. Uh, who are you expecting to make a jump on offense? Uh, jump on offense, I say Duvernay, Devin Duvernay. And who is the offensive dark horse? Um, dark horse will be <laughs> right tackle, Alejandro, or who I forgot to add in that starting lineup, um, or whoever wins that left guard spot. Oh, Bradley Bozeman, Bradley Bozeman, dark horse. Bradley Bozeman, that'll be the one. 
Tyler Trace, number two quarterback. A sack leader, um, Justin Houston and Tyus Bowser. Uh, interception leader, Marcus Peters. Uh, who wears the green dot? Chuck Clark. That ain't going nowhere this year. Tackle leader, Patrick Queen. Who are you expecting a jump from defensively? Uh, Patrick Queen for sure. Because he had a good season last year, but now he'll have had an offseason, so he should have an even better year this year. Uh, and who is a defensive dark horse? Uh, Deshaun Elliott. Uh, AFC division record? Oh, I, I, I don't know because I, I don't know how, many, how much teams we play in the AFC. I don't know what the schedule is like that, so I can't do that one. Season record, uh, 12 and 5. All right, so that, that wasn't so bad, man. That wasn't so bad. When, when I initially read this question a while back, I was like a little scared because I like y'all know how I feel about them, uh, those list questions and how many yards do you think this and the prediction question. I was like, oh, but this, this one wasn't so bad. So I appreciated the know. Now, I know I said the previous question was the last question, but my boy Martin, he sent this in at 10 p.m. last night and I was editing the video, getting ready to edit the video this morning. And I was like, you know what? Let, let me throw my boy Martin's question in this episode as well so he can see it before the game starts. Thoughts. Much love to you, Martin. Shout out to you for being a patron as well. Let's get into it. He said, ain't graven. Hope all is well with you and the fam. Appreciate it. I wanted to ask you today why people feel the need to defend Lamar Jackson. Um, There's a lot more to his question, but the reason, and I can only speak for myself, uh, probably the biggest reason why I feel the need uh, to defend Lamar Jackson, not even necessarily defending him, but I feel the need to speak on a lot of the the wrongs that people think are right um and and i don't and I, I can't blame anybody for doing this but i know a lot of people when they see something that's spoken of on tv uh they hear something that's spoken of on radio whatever they automatically think okay that's that's right because this person they they gotta they verify they got a check mark or something or they on espn they on nfl network they on cbs they on nbc they on abc they on whatever uh, so it's what they're saying it's got to be right right and unfortunately as we all know that's not always the case um and and i want to inform people of what the truth is and actually give people a, a, a different perspective a different perspective on again because with media they they can really twist somebody and they can really they can really do some damage to some people's character like big time damage damage defamation all that stuff to somebody's character um and and it's very unfortunate but the media is very powerful so what we try to do is just clear some things up so people can have a more clear understanding of whatever the situation it might be that uh, is being talked about. Um, so he said, now, before you get on me, I want to say this is not me hating on Lamar in any way. I love our quarterback. I think he's one of the best in the league. My thing is, why do we let these ignorant people get under our skin? Now, um, for me personally, uh, they, they don't get under my skin at all. They... They have no, no, they, they don't get under my skin at all. Um, I have seen plenty of people, heard plenty of people, watched plenty of people uh, hate on Lamar Jackson. Um, and it's for a number of different reasons, and it's very unfortunate, uh, but it, it doesn't get under my skin. Um, now I know some people whose skin it, it does get under And hey, they, they like, hey, Lamar, that's like our cousin That's like family da, 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 da. But, and that's fine, hey, to each his own But um, it for me, it doesn't get under my skin I, I do, even though it doesn't get under my skin I still don't mind correcting a wrong though And again, like I said earlier just, just clearing some stuff up for some people who May be naive to different situations and whatnot When it pertains to a Lamar Jackson um, or really anything we talk about with the Ravens. Or just really football, period. Uh, anyway, he said, why do we let these ignorant people get under our skin? Lamar Jackson has proven them wrong every time. Lamar doesn't need us to be his shield. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. But the thing with Lamar, we can say what he can't say. He's like in really in the public guy. Um, so he, and he can't like respond to all of these different people, uh, which is fine. But all we're doing is having a conversation about it. That's it. All we're doing is having a conversation about it. That's all. Uh, and he said, look, we all want people to stop making hot takes about him. But the truth of the matter is until we ignore these people, they won't ever shut up. Now, with that, I disagree. Um, because if, say, for instance, we never talked about what a lot of these analysts be saying about Lamar, etc., whoever. 
um, they're still going to continue to talk about them regardless. Why? Because that is exactly what they get paid to do. That is their job. That's their income. That's their livelihood. That's their career is going on TV or going on a radio or going on wherever and talking about whoever. Uh, in this instance with Lamar Jackson, Lamar Jackson is a very hot name. He's a very controversial name. He's not a controversial person, but his name, it brings a lot of controversy. So it brings a lot of clicks. It brings a lot of attention. It brings a lot of just spotlight. So these people, whether we uh, talk about what they said about Lamar or not, they're still going to continue it because, again, that's their job. Uh, he said, my favorite QB is Flacco. Yes, go ahead and laugh. I'm not talking about the people watching questions from subscribers, though. Flacco is the butt of every joke in the NFL, and I'm not going to go out there and defend him. Yes, he's washed now. He was never a top 10 QB to begin with, but there were far worse quarterbacks out there than him. Uh, my point is, journalists make hot takes about players all the time and get proven wrong constantly. No one ever thought Flacco could lead the Ravens to a Super Bowl after he did it, and, well, he... They were like, oh, he can't do it again. Now, the same is happening with Lamar Jackson. He could win a Super Bowl this year, win MVP with 5,000 yards passing, 50 touchdowns, four interceptions, rush 4,000 yards, and go 17-0. and In the moment his numbers dipped the following season, which would be inevitable, the same people would say, ah, see, teams have him figured out, and we told you so. There's no pleasing these people, and I don't see why we give them the time of day. Sorry, I didn't mean to offend anyone defending Lamar. I'm just trying to understand the point. No, I get you. I, I get your question. That was a that was a good question. Powerful way to end off this episode. A question from subscribers, Martin. Um, but yeah, that that's it, man. Again, my thing is just to 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 show people like, hey, like let's let's clear this up so you have a more clear understanding of what the situation really is. That that's that's my uh effort. Uh, whenever we try to explain or whenever we talk about what somebody in the media said when it comes to Lamar Jackson. Uh, or more so when they say just some, some outlandish, some, some crazy stuff, some, some off the wall stuff. Because not everything that people say about Lamar is off the wall. But when, when it's like off the wall, that's when we definitely address it because it's the off the wall stuff that can be the most confusing for people. If they, like I said, they'll see it on TV and they'll be like, oh, man. So that's, oh, that's what it is? That's that's the truth? That's that's real? And a lot of times, it's just not. So, appreciate you, Martin. Love y'all, team. Keep it clean. I will see y'all tonight.